Hi folks, Jeremiah One here. Today I've got a quick video about uh, how I assemble um, 460 Roland conversion kit in my 1911 pistols. I've had this kit for a while now. I haven't shot it a lot, but I've had it installed in both my 1911s. Um, this is a Remington R1. This is my old standby. I've also got a Les Bear uh, Premier, Premier 2 uh, tactical uh, inch and a half at 50 yards gun that I've had it installed on. Um, and right away, one of the first things I noticed out of the gate is the factory assembly instructions are kind of a pain in the ass, or the factory assembly procedure. Um, basically, they have you kind of assembling, um, well, first of all, what, what the kit consists of is a different barrel, compensator, full-length guide rod, and this is just the outer half. The other half is installed in there, and it's a two-piece unit um, that threads together. Um, that's the internal threaded in that goes into the pistol like this and then an Allen wrench. I don't know if this is the Allen wrench that came with the kit or not. Um, but the other main thing that's that's the big the big change and, and the big hassle um, it's in assembling these kits is a recoil spring. Um, it's uh, anywhere from they recommend about a 20 pound recoil spring if it's a if it's a stainless gun. Um, stainless has more friction. Um, stainless guns tend to uh, tend to have more internal friction and and, uh, and you don't need as heavy a recoil spring to kind of slow down and absorb the energy um, and I think part of it also is you don't want the extra recoil spring tension because stainless tends to gall more um, it's not as naturally sort of slick or whatever as, as carbon steel is um, carbon steel they recommend like a 24 pound recoil spring uh, that's what I've got in this in this pistol um, 24 pound spring is roughly 50% stronger than, than, the, than the recoil spring you'll typically find in a 1911 pistol. Um, quick note on recoil springs in pistols general and e even in rifles, buffer springs in ARs, off rod springs in Garands. You know, any, any time you have a spring that, that's, that's a major part of, part of the function of, of the firearm, um, it's a good idea to periodically replace those springs, especially when they're absorbing recoil and helping absorb energy. Because that really saves a wear and tear, a lot of wear and tear on the gun, saves a lot of wear and tear on the shooter and the brass. Um, it's just an excellent idea. They're generally, um, you know, springs are considered a wear part. They do wear out eventually. Um, for a 1911 pistol, highest quality springs you can get, which is like a Wolf, they're like seven, eight bucks a piece. Um, and if you can get a wide variety of recoil springs, um, some some places you can even wolf will even have like tuner kits um, so you can tune the pistol to the ammo there's really no excuse whatsoever no reason you ever have to shoot a really heavy spring um, with light ammo and uh, experience and deal with malfunctions and failures uh, you also don't have to beat the hell out of the gun and yourself um, or any other shooter running a, a light spring or one that's worn out with hard-hitting you know heavy ammo it's just so easy to, to replace a spring in like 20 seconds that to not do so when you change ammo types um, you know you're just either kind of lazy or ignorant or, or or too cheap to realize you're just going to spend more down the line you know that gun's going to be worn out more quickly um, but anyway big difference 460 rolling is a recoil spring 24 pound spring the factory assembly technique basically um, a recommended technique basically has you assembling um, the pistol uh, with the barrel in the slide and installing having the comp installed um, on the barrel etc installing the slide on the frame and then using a funky I don't have mine laying here but there's got a kind of funky they call it open-ended um, bushing wrench to try to finagle everything into, into place and and, uh, and uh, get everything assembled and it's a real pain in the ass so what I came across to what I came up with fairly early on um, as a mechanic, I'm always, you know, kind of thinking about things like this, mechanical things, and trying to figure out better ways and quicker ways to do stuff. It's like, well, this is a two-piece recoil spring, or two-piece guide rod assembly, and uh, the comp screws on the barrel last. Um, why do I need to assemble all that stuff onto the slide, you know, and try to fight so many parts at once? Why can't I just try to assemble it like a normal 1911? And that's, in fact, what I do. Um... It's really simple. Uh, obviously, the uh, comp is notched for the outer section of the recoil of the recoil spring guide rod, 
and something else I've noticed in a few other videos online is they don't really mention it. Um, you should Loctite the comp onto the barrel. I'm not doing it here. Um, I actually use red Loctite and it doesn't, you know, because of the pounding and the heat and everything, it's not going to hold like, like it otherwise might in some other areas. Um, actually Loctite is, is tremendously overused. Um, by a lot of people in a lot of places where it shouldn't and isn't shouldn't be used and isn't necessary but you can't tell people that because they they just assume you know if a screw comes loose it's it's not it's because it's not loctite it's not because they didn't torque it correctly or the threads were oily or you know whatever like that to begin with that they didn't assemble it properly it's you know it's it's got to be band-aided with loctite but anyway that's basically screwed all the way on mine goes all the way on and then back that little fraction of a turn everything's fully assembled fully seated the other thing you want to be careful of when you do this is when you do it with loctite you don't want to use an excessive amount or if you do you want to kind of make sure you wipe it off good um, because you can actually get loctite uh, and you can end up loctiting the uh, kind of the barrel to the to the bushing and uh, the comp to the bushing a little bit not a huge deal you can jack around with them and knock it loose a little bit but it's 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 just a hassle but anyway so this is how I go about it I've already got the recoil spring and everything installed now I've got my comp screwed on now I can just take my outer section of my recoil spring guide rod and it's hexed on the outside use my Allen wrench and just screw it right in. There's no no reason whatsoever that you have to have all that stuff in the way at once while you're trying to fight that fight that slide together and fight that recoil spring into position and it can't turn once it's in there so you can give it a little snug up while your Loctite is still uh, you know soft and uncured make sure everything's lined up correctly there and let the gun set for an hour, whatever it takes for your Loctite to cure, and you're good to go. And this is just so much easier to assemble it that way because it's so much easier to mess with that guide rod spring, um, or that recoil spring, and get it shoved down where it needs to go and manipulate the bushing and everything, um, and, and the, the spring cap and everything with the comp and the guide rod out of the way than, than to do it the way the the, the factory instructions say and uh, the way at least one or two videos I've seen online say so that's how I prefer to do it thanks for watching